Hey guys, I made this desk for my sister-in-law as a wedding gift and now I'm going to show you how I did it. Hey everybody, welcome back. Today what I'm actually going to start on is making a desk for my wife's sister. So I made a couple of desks a few months ago for us to use in our loft upstairs and we have our computers on them and it was a place for Kelsey to do my wife to do her studying. It's a good place and they're they're very large, they're they're long, they take up one whole wall, very sturdy and uh, my wife's sister actually expressed interest in these desks whenever I made them. She really liked them and she she wanted one for herself. However, we're in Texas and she's in Indiana so that's a long way to transport a desk, right? And usually we fly back, so there's just no way for us to get it there. But luckily my mother's coming down for uh, Fourth of July week here pretty soon, and we worked out a way that maybe she can take the desk back up with her. So I'm not gonna be able to put it together fully. I'm gonna have to kind of make all the parts and I can get the desktop together and we're gonna have to send it up there in pieces basically. And then I'll have to put it together when we go up in August for her sister's wedding. So this is gonna be a wedding gift for her sister and hopefully she likes it. I think she's gonna be surprised. I don't think that she's gonna be expecting it at all. So I think it'll be a good surprise. I have a couple of ideas. I think I wanna make an L-shaped desk, kind of like a farmhouse style desk. Desk. And I have some general dimensions in mind. I need to draw it out and just be able to visualize it, right? Once I get the dimensions settled out, then we will get to cutting and uh, let's start making some sawdust. The first pieces I'm going to cut are the leg frames. I'm starting with the top and bottom pieces of the legs first. Then I measure out the proper length for the legs and mark it on my fence. And secure a stop block for repeatability. Next I cut out the sides of the leg frame. Then I need to drill the pocket holes so I can join all of the boards together. Since I'm working with 2x4s, I need to change the step stop from 3 quarters of an inch to an inch and a half, since that's the actual thickness of the boards that I'm working with. I also need to change the depth stop of this collar on my drill bit. All right guys, now that everything's set up here with the Craig jig, I'm going to go ahead and drill the holes in the bottoms and the tops of the legs. Hey guys, I just want to take this opportunity while I'm drilling these holes just to tell you guys how appreciative I am of you watching my build. And if you like what you see, please take a moment and hit that thumbs up button for me. That tells YouTube that you enjoy watching me struggle through my process. But seriously, that feedback really helps me know what you guys like and don't like and how I can make better content for you. As always, I love having you here and I hope you enjoy the rest of this build. After I got all the legs cut out, I decided to go ahead and sand them. It's much easier to reach everything before you put it together. This way I don't have to deal with those nooks and crannies and corners. I usually try to do this when I'm putting stuff together. Just, you know, sand as I go. So here I'm gluing up the legs that will hold the X braces for the desk. I have to make sure that the bottoms are flush and level, so I spend a little extra time making sure everything is flat. I then clamp it all in place and drive the screws in my pocket holes, which will be hidden on the underside of the leg. And here you can really see me in my natural habitat, singing along with my 3M work tunes during assembly.
It really is no wonder I get a lot of strange looks from people as they walk by my garage. So here I'm just cutting the boards that I'm going to use for the X braces in the legs. Once I get the first board cut, I'm going to use it to mark the second board so they're roughly the same size. I cut them a little long so I can just sneak up on the correct angles a bit later. These boards are wide enough to get both strips that make up the X-Brace from a single board. So I just rip each board down to my desired widths over on the table saw. So I take one of the X-Braces and place it under the leg diagonally. Once I ensure the edge of the X is in the corner, I draw a line. This referential measurement will be incredibly more accurate than simply measuring for the cut. So this next part would have been so much easier if I had a sliding T-bevel, but I don't. So I just kind of eyeballed it over at the miter saw. I made sure to cut far enough away from my line so that I could sneak up on it and ensure my cut was parallel to the line. After a few minor adjustments, I was happy with the cut. Now that I have one corner in place, I need to mark the other end. And then just rinse and repeat. So here I'm just testing the fit of the first piece of the X brace in the frame. Seeing that it's a tight fit in both directions, I feel confident to cut the other piece with the same angles. Now with both pieces of the X brace cut, I do a dry fit in the frame. I make sure the spacing is just right and test for any looseness or wobble. When it all looks good, I move on to the glue up. Alright guys, now that I have the legs fixed, it's time to move on to the rest of the frame for the table. So now I'm just marking out the distances and cutting the frame pieces for the desk. Once I verify the cut is accurate, I can cut the rest with confidence. Here I'm positioning the table upside down just to ensure this top stretcher is flat and flush with the top of this leg brace. I clamp it down when I get it just right, that way it won't move on me. You may also notice here that I'm not using any wood glue on these joints just yet. This is because I have to get everything cut to size and then disassemble it into pieces so it'll fit in an SUV that will then be driven 18 hours so it can then be transferred to a pickup truck and driven another hour and a half just to get to its final destination. This thing had quite the journey ahead of it. Now I'm drilling pocket holes up through the aprons of the desk. I'll use these to attach the desktop later. This will make it really easy to remove the desktop in the future if needed for moving or refinishing or what have you. Now it's time to assemble the two pieces of the desk together, and the L shape is finally starting to take place. Still no glue, only pocket hole screws. And this right here is me tripping over my sander that I left in the middle of my workspace. Safety first guys, safety first. And now for the extremely scientific structural engineering test, also known as fat man swinging. Yep, that'll last a few years. 
Well, guys, it's a good thing I didn't glue this together already because I came back out this morning and realized that I drilled the holes to attach the tabletop in the wrong direction. So I have to now take this back off and drill the holes in the correct direction. Yeah, I would say I'm embarrassed, but it's past that point. I've done this like three or four times on different tables I've built. So we're way past that. I don't, I have a problem. Now I needed to attach the front apron for the desk. I used a small clamp on the leg to help support the board while I attached it with screws. Still going glueless for now. Once I attached the other end of the front apron, I very quickly realized that I had locked myself and a chair inside the desk frame. How embarrassing. And so convenient I caught it on camera too. So here I'm measuring to find the middle of my frame so I can mark for the stretcher. Now that the center is marked, I can attach the stretcher. This will help prevent any racking and support the desktop. I'm using a bar clamp here to hold this apron and stretcher tight while I drive the screws in to secure them in place. And with that, the frame is now complete and I just need to move on to the tabletop. All right guys, I got the frame all built. It's sturdy, it's good to go. Now I'm ready to get the tabletop on. So the first thing I gotta do is I've gotta rough cut the lumber that I'm gonna use for the desktop. And then I'm gonna go over it with my orbital sander just really lightly to get some of the dirt and just kind of debris off of it. And then we'll get right into jointing and planing and all that good stuff. And we're gonna make ourselves a really nice tabletop. So let's get to it. My miner saw doesn't cut quite deep enough to reach all the way across these boards on the first go. So I just flip the board over and line it up with my eye to finish the cut. This can be a rough cut and you can finalize it later with a circular or track saw, or even sanding if you get close enough. Then I ran one edge of each of the boards through my joiner to get a nice straight edge. I'll later square the other edge on my table saw after I plane the faces. After getting one edge straight on all of the boards, I then ran them through the planer to get the faces flat. Some of the boards were flat enough that I could just run them through while others required a sled with some wedges. Ah yes, the obligatory into the planer shot. Ah, movie magic. Gotta love it. My fence on this cobalt table saw is kind of wonky, so I always measure to make sure that I'm the exact distance that I want from the blade before I make any cuts. With the fence locked in, I rip all the boards for the tabletop to the same width. Also note, I'm running the edge that I jointed earlier of each of these boards against the fence. This should allow all of the boards to fit together without any gaps. With the longer boards, I had to be really careful and keep the edge of the board flush against the fence for the entire pass to ensure a parallel rip. So now that all the cutting is done and over with, I went back and determined the best way to ship this desk in my mother's SUV from Texas all the way to Kentucky. After multiple attempts to get it in the vehicle in one piece, I finally decided that I needed to ship it in two pieces and I would just assemble them when I got there the weekend of the wedding. Talk about pushing it to the last minute. Anyway, I figured out the best way to divide the desk into two pieces, and I went back and took it apart, and then I added glue to each of the joints and re-screwed the boards back together. I didn't show that process here because it really was just as boring and punishing as it sounds. 
So with the desk frame in two pieces, we needed to start painting since we were starting to run out of time. Thankfully, my wife stepped up and got the milk paint on this frame while I was at work one day. I really couldn't have gotten this done in time without her help. Isn't she the best? Dude, that picture that a man has not faced for the bus is comical. I didn't see it, I had to look. Oh, it's when we went to NSYNC together. Oh, it was? Yeah. yeah you want to get sentimental, there you go. There you go. There you go. While the paint was drying on the frame, I assembled the tabletop. Since this is an L-shaped top, I had to assemble it in sections initially. Sticking with the farmhouse style theme, I used glue and pocket screws to join the boards for the top. After letting both pieces dry overnight, I glued and screwed them together and let the final assembly set for the rest of the day, just to ensure a good glue up. Let's just suffice it to say, after a ton of sanding, I was ready to stain and finish the top. Since this top is made from pine to stick with the farmhouse style for the build, I decided to try something a little different this time. I usually have an issue with blotching when I stain pine, so I use preconditioner. Well, I don't really like the way that makes the wood look when it's stained. I think a golden color still shows through more than I like. So this time I decided to give gel stain a try. This was the first time I've ever used it and I really enjoyed the outcome. I used General Finishes Antique Walnut on this top. If you like the way it looks, I'll have a link for that below. I also changed up how I protect the top with a clear coat in this project. I usually use poly for the top finishing, but I was running really behind on this build and decided to use lacquer. I actually wanted to use brushing lacquer, but when I say I was running behind, I mean it. So I used spray lacquer and applied about seven coats to the top side and about three coats to the bottom side. I sanded with 320 before my last spray just to get rid of any bumps. Then after my final coat, I used some 4 out steel wool to knock it down and give it a satin look and feel. And that's it guys, it's done. By running behind, I mean that my wife and I had to load this desk at 2 a.m. the night before my parents had to leave the next morning. This is really just another example of how I couldn't have done this without her. Alright guys, the desk is all packed up and ready for its new home. See you at the wedding. Alright guys, we finally got it put together and I hope she likes it. I think it's going to be a big surprise for her and I think she's going to be really excited. So if you guys enjoyed this build and you would like to follow along with my future projects, make sure you subscribe and follow along. And thank you guys so much for watching. Until the next time I see you guys, keep making sawdust. Hey guys, so I made this desk for my sister-in-law, Morgan. Uh... I was getting ready to attach this and I forgot to, uh, forgot to drill the pocket holes. <laughs> There goes the breaker. Ah. <sighs>